Just wanted to give a quick shout out to my main man, Lockie. We had a coaching session this morning and we played some football tennis and we managed to get 125 football tennis rallies in a row. So every time it goes over the net, that's one. So it went one, two, three, four, five, up to 125. The kid's only nine years old, so massive shout out to him. Great work this morning. Keep it up. Good, one. Two. <laughs> that was just a little clip I had with my coaching session today. I had two boys named Sam and Jack that have been on the channel before. And I tell you, it is boiling hot. Actually, it's died off a little bit, but my goodness, look at our setup for today. We have awning, awnings, 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 awnings everywhere because it is so hot. It is just ridiculous. Luckily, the clouds are out a little bit now, but before when the sun was maybe over there, I can't, I can't see out there, but... When the sun was out, it was killer, and the boys today did a little bit of fitness, and then we did some football tennis like you saw, and man, it was tough on them. They, they did really well though, I'm stoked for them. Um, they really pushed through that heat. I also had a session earlier in the morning, so today my day when I woke up at 7.45, then I had a session at 8.15 till 9.15 uh, with Lockie, and after that I had a session from 10 till 11.30, so bit of a jam-packed morning. It's about 4.30 now, so I've had most of the afternoon to relax. I uh, played a bit of FIFA, nothing too serious now, but I'm just looking at this. I wrote down some points from the other day when I spoke to my mentor when we are doing the game review. I've got a little bit of, I guess you call it homework, but I don't like the word homework because homework for me ties into something that you don't like and you have to do. Not so much you don't like, but you have to do it. And this, I don't have to do it. Uh, it's something that he's given me. I don't have to do it if I don't want to, but because I know it will help me and I trust him, it's something that I'm definitely going to do. Couple points here, it's looking at the game plan for tomorrow. So it's Saturday today, we play tomorrow afternoon. Looking at my game plan, I have to have two to three points of what I'm going to focus on in that match. Uh, I have to define the word grit, which I don't actually know, like, truly, well, I kind of know what it means, but I need to tr truly know what it means, and I need to make a couple of notes of some pictures that uh, my mentor sent to me during the game, so I sent him the video, he watched it, took a couple of screenshots, and then I need to make a brief uh, dot point on what I see in that picture and what I could do better and then I need to write some brief key points from the session that I had with him uh, just a bit of a summary so that he knows that I'm getting what he's saying and then if he thinks that I'm not sure on anything we can clarify uh, and go from there so I'm going to get into that get my game plan for tomorrow the two to three points that will pretty much consist of so those three points I'll be looking at those uh, I'm not sure if I'm able to tell you those just because uh, they're coming from him but they're three good points they help me a lot playing number 10 there's something that I can write on my hand during the game and focus on if I get distracted or I'm not doing anything that I can look at my hand and go okay yeah that's what I have to focus on so if you ever have to focus on anything during the game whether it's look for space or take two touches or finish on site, I highly suggest writing it on your hand so that whenever you whenever you get distracted or caught up in the game and you're not focused or the ball goes out, you can have a quick look and go, okay, that's what I'm focusing on and make sure that you're always focused on the task because the game, for me, it goes 90 minutes and if you switch off for one of those minutes, even when the ball's out of play, then you're losing time and you could be doing something productive with that time while the ball's there, you could find space or whatever it may be. So I'm going to get on with that stuff. I'll let you know how it goes and I'll see you soon. Spike it this way so hopefully it goes that way. Hopefully. Are you ready? Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> they're cooked. They're just, they're just not They're brown. not brown. Mm. We're looking for that brown. Yeah. 
That sounds good. Dad's just set up this outdoor light. It's a bit bright to see on camera, but it's pretty good, isn't it? We got the mosquito, mosquito fires going. So the mosquitoes don't come and get us. Wait, I should be this way. Hopefully that lighting's better. And we're gonna have a nice dinner out here. It's cooled off a bit. So we're having South African sausages with coleslaw and bread rolls. This light is looking sick. Good job, Dad. Just finished going live on Instagram. It was pretty sick hanging out with a couple of you guys. I also just finished my mental work. Uh, I had to make dinner as well, as you saw. I wanna take you through a couple of images. So let's take a look at, let's say, two images this first one here that i want to discuss as you can see it will be on the screen somewhere as you can see our number six has the ball so he's going forward with the ball just in front of the referee and i am in the middle of the semicircle on halfway in the orange shirt so what happens here is the guy with the ball dribbles towards me and then plays a ball through to the striker which he doesn't manage to get onto but what happens here is that I go to, I don't really run away from uh, the guy on the ball. I kind of stand there and wait because I think I'm in a good position. But if I was to turn my shoulder and see that this number six on their team in the big hole in front of me is there, then I should be going forward so that I can give a passing lane from our number six with the ball to myself. But that immediately comes from when I see that he's dribbling with the ball towards me. I need to be straight away switched on to run away from him to open up that space. Because if I stand still and he dribbles to more, towards me, what will happen is it just closes the space and I get left with not much. But that has nothing to do with the guy on the ball. That's brilliant. If he dribbles towards me, I run away, I get even more space. Whereas if he passed it straight away, then I don't have as much space as I could have. So really good by him. Dribbled in and uh, played the ball. I think that was Charlie, I'm not sure, but uh, he played the ball. But if I were to run away, uh, almost looking outside the semicircle diagonally to the left, then I would be in a really good position for him. So that's something I'm looking at tomorrow. If someone's running at the ball with me or the ball's close to me, run away from the ball. But not just run. <laughs> it's more, okay, where's the best spot for me to go? Where can I get, where's the best space for me to go so that I can receive the ball and turn forward and eliminate their defensive midfielder out of the game. Uh, so that's the first picture. We'll move on to the second one. This one here, I'm right next to the ref. Our centre back is just about to receive the ball in the orange. And I think what happens here is the centre back takes a touch forward and then plays me the ball. And then I do a one touch to our other six. Uh, so on this one, I'm standing in okay space, but their six was switched off. He wasn't thinking, and he dropped off to their centre-back, so it left me with a lot of space. But what I should have done is started back there and given a lot of depth for the team. And if I stayed back there and then checked into the space I'm in now, that gives me a better opportunity to receive the ball, whereas now I'm standing, the, I'm standing still and receiving the ball. So that's just looking at manufacturing that space that I'm in by moving away from it waiting until the precise moment. Sorry about that, just a couple of words that I needed to understand. So like I was saying, I need to manufacture that space by moving away from the space that I want to receive the ball in. So whether that means staying up higher and then staying behind their defensive midfielder so he can't see me and then running in and receiving the ball so that I can turn or play a one touch pass, just makes it a lot easier to receive the ball. So those are my two points, two quick things. I don't wanna to go too much into it, I might do a um, something else another time, but it will take a lot longer to go through everything that I want to speak about. There's also a goal that I scored. Here it is. So I spoke about this the other week, or the other day, uh, this was a pass from Mitch, 
uh, where now that I've looked back at the clip, what happened is he hit it into the ground, which made it bounce a little bit. And because he made that bounce, I was able to get my touch into the ground and over the guy's foot and then finish uh, on my second touch or third touch. So that was pretty cool once I watched back because I didn't understand. I was in the game and I said, wait, how did I get that touch over his foot? So that was pretty cool. But anyway, I have a game to tomorrow, so I need to get that eight hours sleep. I also have coaching in the morning. Really looking forward to the game tomorrow. We're playing Parramatta, so they're, they're in the same league as us, so it should be a more difficult contest, and we'll see how we go. So looking forward to it. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe, leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Awesome.